Hey, welcome back everybody. Sign here again. Uh, this time with a, uh, actually, a video in response to a request for a, uh, basically a bit of a tutorial on how the uh, Blood Magic Blood Altar works. So, you can see here, this is what you're going to be building eventually. If you go for the full tier 6. Um, unless you're getting really heavy into Blood Magic, tier 5 should be all you really need. Uh, you could go to tier 6, but that's pretty advanced mechanics into the mod to get that far. So, but what we're looking at here is, I've got signs and item frames everywhere. Got your standard blood altar. This thing is a tier 1 by itself, right? It's here, bottom left corner, current essence 0, current tier 1, capacity 10,000 LP. Right? Pretty basic, just what you start off with, and easy to make, right? I believe this is the default recipe. This is the default recipe in the Hoarder's Delight mo 2 mod pack. But I don't think this one got changed. Furnace, diamond, 2 gold, and 4 smooth stone, and you're done. Right? So, put that down in your world. Now, unless you plan on moving it at some point in time, I would be very careful about your area. A full size of this thing is a 23 by 23 by 11 structure right 23 blocks wide 23 blocks long 11 blocks tall or deep whatever you want to call it if you have if you upgrade these beacons here to be full beacons you don't have to you can i don't even think you need these blocks underneath it. i just did it because i like how the light beams look going off into the sky it just makes it look kind of cooler but i mean it might help because you can get things like regeneration so, I mean, and like say resistance might help too or something like that, but you could do the different beacon effects. So, step one, if you're going to do a full-size beacon or full-size uh, blood altar, 23 by 23 footprint is what you're looking at, right? So don't, don't just place down that thing in the middle of your base and expect to get a full, you know, altar out of it. It's, unless you move a bunch of stuff, it's not going to happen. As it is. <clears throat> like say you do your 23 by 23 area right mark your center spot and then you're going to want to put this thing was it like five blocks up uh let's get back and count here so one two three four five and then this thing goes stack five blocks up put this on top and you know there's your altar it's middle of the air right now not very helpful but you can kind of do what i did here which Smooth stone is where your different blood runes are going to go. All right. The quartz, that can be any block. It can be air. It doesn't matter. That's there just so that, you know, you have something to walk around on and whatnot up here. Uh, you can completely submerge your entire altar under the surface if you want. You don't have to leave the runes exposed to air. Uh, if you're going to use the beacons, I wouldn't do that. But... You know, it's it's kind of an aesthetic thing. Like, what do you want to do? So, to get it to go to tier 2, these 8 blocks here, which, by the way, does not include that one. That can be, you know, an error block or whatever, which will come in handy for automating the altar. But I don't have any more Seuss on me. Whoops. Oh, I'll just put a blood ring there instead. So, time to take it to tier 2, right? Well, to do that, you're going to need... Uh, let's get this. This is the creative sacrificial knife, but uh, you know, let's your regular sacrificial knife is pretty simple. Piece of iron, piece of gold, five glass, right? And you use this thing. Well, the creative one's going to do a lot more LP, but each time you prick your finger, it does a heart worth of damage to you. And it gives you 200 LP. Now the creative one, one right click in creative mode, it fills your altar. I do think if you're not in creative mode, it will kill you outright. Now if you die with blood magic installed, you get a debuff called soul fray. You may have noticed it before. What that does is that will let you, uh, you can sacrifice hit points still, but you will not get any LP for it until that debuff goes away. It's to keep you from, say, setting your spawn here. And just spam clicking your dagger, respawning, spam clicking dagger, respawn, so on and so forth, right? 
is to make it so you actually have to heal up afterwards. But you can see here now, okay, we got a tier one altar. It's got 10,000 LP. Let's take this thing to a tier two. Now to do that, oh, it's not gonna work, is it? Oh, well. Oh, and the sign here is one block from the center. One from the center. That's where you wanna put your blood runes. So, well, the sign's gone now. Item frames stay put though, so that does help a bit. The shifting crossed rod is not going to work as well as I thought it would. All right, but now we've replaced eight, all eight of those blocks with, you know, our blood runes here, which blood runes are made six smooth stone, an orb, and uh, blank slates. Now, the only orb you can get with a tier one is the weak blood orb. Now, that requires a diamond and 2,000 LP in your altar. And all you got to do is just right-click the diamond onto, uh, let's see, uh, materials, diamond, and uh, let's put that back, right? So just, boom, right click. And it just sits up there, gives you little red swirlies. If the swirls turn white, it means you've run out of LP or life points in your altar, and the progress is now stopped. I don't know if it'll reset if you let it sit too long, but... Probably a good idea to not, you know, make sure you have enough LP in your altar before you go to make something. Either that or be prepared to add LP to it as it's processing. Now, you can see here, this is still kind of on the slow side. There are ways to speed it up. Different runes you can add to your altar, which I'll explain later. We'll make it do things like hold more LP, process things faster, so on and so forth. Now, this LP or the blood in here is actually a... Uh, it's an actual liquid. So, boom, there we go. Now you have your weak blood orb. Right click once, and that will bind it to your character. You see the current owner, the elder sign. Now, whenever you right click this thing, it will do a harder damage to you and add 200 LP, not to your altar, but to your personal blood network, your own LP network. And so what that means is uh, there are different sigils and so on and so forth that need power to run uh, one of the easiest ones i think on top of my head sigil of the green grove it uses your own personal lp network to fuel its you know effect which in this case is to speed up the growth of everything around you uh, you can right click on something with it to uh, bone meal it directly at the cost of lp or you can shift right click it to turn it on and it, you now are starting to uh vastly accelerate the growth in an area of effect around you. However, it does burn LP. Uh, there's another one where you right click and it creates a lava source, or you right click and it creates a water source wherever you click, you know, which there are different things you can do with that as well. But so we've got our blood orb now, right? Well, you can use this thing for a few different things. Uh, for one is use uh, the alchemical chemistry set to make a few different things. That requires LP, which comes from your network as well, the personal network. Uh, you can make a, a, a lava crystal, and that uses your LP network to uh, cook things in a furnace. Now, there, you can put it into certain um, mod items that you know burn furnace fuels, but be careful. Uh, there's been a couple of instances I found in the past where it breaks and you're screwed you have to mc edit the item that has a lava crystal out or as i've done in the past when i was too lazy to mc edit i removed the mod that was causing the issue opened my world saved it shut it down put the mod back in and then proceeded from there uh, one of the main things is uh, steve's carts steve's carts 2 i think it is do not use that to run carts it yeah it'll ruin everything uh, the water sigil right click place your water source right your blood runes which is what you make up your altar with these are the basic blood runes and there's different upgraded versions but this is what you're going to start off with uh rune of the orb now that's a later tier thing uh you can see it's flashing through different orbs each of these comes from a uh, a different tier of altar but you can see that the the weak blood orb is not showing up the first one that shows up is the masters which you don't get until you hit tier, what, four? So it'll be a little while. I wouldn't worry too much about that as it is. Uh, let's see. 
uh, imperfect ritual stones, which you know they're kind of sort of useful. Not really. There's things you can do with them, but the only crafting recipes you can do is make facades or covers out of them. So the divination sigil, though, this is about maybe the most important, at least early game uh, thing you can make with your blood orb. And that's just you know a blank slate, which I'll show you how to make in a second. Weak blood orb and some glass. That's the thing I've been clicking the altar with to tell me how much LP's in it, what tier it's at, so on and so forth. That'll let you keep an eye on things to see what's going on, because otherwise you have no idea. Well, there's a couple mods that work around it, but uh, for the most part, if it's just blood magic, then yeah, you need to have this to figure out what's going on. Especially if you run your personal network out of LP and you try using something, you start getting like nausea and a few other effects and then so on and so forth oh and damage and then the alchemical chemistry set which there's a few different recipes you can use which I think here we go <coughs> oh, excuse me I can make simple catalyst you can make cobwebs fractured bone you can duplicate gunpowder uh, make grass blocks without silk touch duplicate flint you make bread pretty damn easy Takes a little bit of LP, but on that you're done. Turn rotten flesh into leather. <coughs> Make fire charges. Uh, turn cobble into sand. And turn wool into string. You can turn hardened clay back into soft clay, which is one of the few ways I know of to actually do that easily. Uh, and turn smooth stone into gravel, water and lava into obsidian without having to mine it up, which is kind of handy. Water or water bucket and a snowball into a block of ice again without silk touch one to one sugar cane into paper so if you only need one paper eh, kind of useful and this chemistry set is automatable by the way through a uh, blood magic ritual but you know you can turn cactus into water which is kind of interesting it'd be an interesting premise for a map actually uh, glass into glass bottles I'm not sure why that's a thing maybe in case you want to remove the glass bottle recipe so you have to do this I, I don't know and then turn charcoal into actual coal so it could be useful and you got your lava crystal again so you need the orb to make these blood runes right now we also need blank slates which blank slates are simply a smooth stone in the blood altar and, and 1000 LP so five pricks to your finger right but you don't have to do them in rapid succession. You can go over, stab, 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 go off, do something while you heal, come back later, stab, stab, stab. It'll hold on to it. So it does have a small internal tank as well. But that's for useful or for use whenever you're uh, pumping blood in and out of it via conduits or whatnot. Which you can do. I mean you can actually store extra blood in a tank somewhere. And then pipe it back in when you need it, which is it's a pretty good way to uh, do some of the more advanced rituals. The problem is the altar has a really, it bottlenecks the transfer of fluid in or out. To, it's like 20 millibuckets a tick. It's, it's horribly slow compared to everything else. There are ways to speed it up, but it's making it a more advanced rune. It's called the rune translocation. But you know, it is a thing you could do. And like I said, if you're playing questing map and it wants you to have, you know, Turn blood in. Well, you can use it to pump it straight into the QDS and, and go from there. Now this thing here, item, Dagger of Sacrifice. Now what this does is, um, I don't have one on me. Hmm. Well, now I do. And I'm just gonna, I don't need that blood orb anymore. I'm just gonna get rid of it. And let's get ourselves like a cow, right? Right now I have peaceful mode on, otherwise I'd <clears throat> grab like a creep or something but see the cow on there now if you just simply left click it once it insta kills and you saw the little red swirls it gave LP to your uh, blood altar passive mobs give less LP than hostile mobs uh, hostile mobs will give 500 I think passives are 200 250 but you know I mean it's it's a way to get LP without having to stab yourself now say if you set up a mob farm on top of this thing and funnel your your targets. I think it's within two blocks of your uh, your blood altar. 
Usually I have them sitting right here and just stab, stab, stab in the feet. Every time you do, you get 500 LP. And depending on how good your mob form is, you can drain a lot of LP in a very short amount of time doing that. But Dagger Sacrifice, definitely one of the easier ways to automate. So I would definitely go for that first. So, but a bit of a hint, you got a good mob farm going already. Maybe build this thing under your mob farm. You still do get drops in experience from killing mobs with the Dagger Sacrifice. It just also has the additional benefit of, say, you know, giving a useful resource for blood magic. Now, let's see. Three from the center now, right? So, center block, one, two, three, and one down. So, you only go one down, two blocks out, and then start putting your runes in. This is for the next tier. This one takes a total of 20 runes. Okay, this one, eight runes, right? So, you have eight runes total to get a tier two. To get to a tier three, you're going to need 28 total runes. Now, each basic rune takes two blank slabs, or basic slabs, whatever they're called. Slates. Blank slates, right? Whoa. Wrong thing. Look at that. There we go. Blank slates, yes. Okay. So, you know, go to put that in, and let's see. You know, I'm just... No, not the quartz. That. There we go. I don't really care at this point if I'm accidentally converting more than one layer's worth. I don't feel like sitting here punching out, and I'll do these last two, I guess, by hand. So, I would like a better swapping wand, but unfortunately, the pack I'm showing this off in doesn't have one. A lot of shift cracks works okay, but it's a little haphazard. But now we have, you know, this tier done, which will give you the blue, the Magician's Blood Orb. That will let you craft a few more things, right? But we come up here, tier three, and you can see it's still, yeah, the cow gave us 250 LP, it's right there. But, uh... It still only holds 10,000, even though it's a tier 3. Well, let's get around that. There's a couple of ruins. Let's see. And I think it's... Ruins of... We have augmented capacity and superior capacity. All right, And each one of these you add in place of one of these basic runes, or basic blood runes, will, will I think give you, like, augmented gives you additional 2,000 LP it'll store. But let's see, you know, it's, this one requires, I believe, at least a Magician's Blood Orb. The blue one, you can just now make a tier three. So it's a little bit of a tricky proposition. And then Imbued Slate, right? Imbued Slate, thank you. Which is also requiring a tier three and 5,000 LP. And you have to put a Reinforced Slate in. Well, Reinforced Slates come from Blank Slates in a tier two altar and 2,000 LP. So if you leave a, a piece of smooth stone in there long enough, it becomes a blank slate. Leave it in there again, it'll become reinforced. And so on and so forth. As long as your altar is a high enough tier to uh, support the crafting of it, then your slate will just keep progressing until it hits the point where either there's no more slates to turn into or your altar's not powerful enough. So. And, you know, oh, I should probably point this out. Also, for a tier 3, not only do you need 20 extra runes, you need 4 blocks of glowstone. This block here, I used reinforced dark glass, I just like how it looks. But it's not important what type of block it is. I mean, it can be anything you want. You can use diamond blocks if you want. But you need to have it from the same level here, go up 2 more, and then put it, cap it with glowstone. Right? The glowstone is actually going to be 1 block higher than your altar. Right? I mean, it's not sure exactly why but I mean hell that's the easy part compared to these but it will not complete without those so it doesn't matter I don't even think you need to have blocks here that can be just floating but you need the glowstone now to go to a tier 4 let's see ah thank you we need to finish off with these runes here. Wait, this one didn't convert any of them, huh? That's weird. And yeah, you convert all but one, and all but one. Uh, okay. The rather shifting crust is a little strange sometimes. But let's see. 
28 runes. Now we need another 28 runes to do this one. This is five blocks from the center. And then another block down. So you go one block down, block, and then here. All right. So you should have a one wide gap here. Man, it makes a nice tiered like ziggurat structure, but it does have to be the vertical difference as well as the horizontal. Then, however, you're going to need large bloodstone bricks, right? Now these things need to be put in at a Y level of one block higher than the glowstone. This is one of the reasons why this thing is freaking tall. Not only does it go down, it goes up, right? And to get these things, you need to combine a weak blood shard with a smooth stone. Now, why do I have two of these? Hmm, that one can go away. All right, let's put these in there for now, and I don't think I need that. But to get these things, you need to kill hostile mobs. Passives just don't work. I mean, you can, the only passive mob that doesn't die in one hit from this thing uh, is a horse, and they don't drop blood shards either. So I'm going to say, put it back to normal mode. I'm gonna go, uh, let's get rid of that. And we're gonna get some creepers in, right? This is not a 100% drop chance, by the way. So there's a few creepers. Now, when you first pick it up, you're gonna notice that it's a ball. Well, first of all, you have to make it, right? Which is a binding ritual, which I'm not gonna get into right now. Um, probably get into it at a later date, but a binding ritual, you toss a diamond sword in and it becomes the bound blade. Caution, may cause a bad day. If you do not have enough personal LP, this sword will kill you. But you shift right click and it turns into a sword. Now we smack creeper. Whoop. Probably should do it slower this time. Smack a hostile. You see he's got this little debuff going on? While that's going on, if you kill him with a bound blade, he has a chance of dropping a blood shard. Really, all you need is one. There we go. Finally got one, right? All right, let's go back to peaceful before the uh, the slimes annoy the hell out of me. There we go. So we have ourselves a blood shard now, right? And weak blood shards. Uses, you can use them to make empty sockets, which you can then turn into uh, bound armor, which is excellent armor, by the way. Uh, arcane pedestal, armor inhibitor, and key of binding. Binds other items to the owner's network. A uh, little complicated. I can maybe touch on that later. However, one week blood shard stone gives you 32 large bloodstone bricks. All right. Enhanced teleposition focus. Weak blood shard. Reinforced now. Uh, teleposition. Uh, it's, it's an ability you can set up where you can actually swap two blocks in your world at the press of a button, a redstone signal. And you can also make little ender shards. However, um, there is usually, there it is. You take your orb, your weak blood shard, and an imbued slate, which again is the tier three slate, right? And it'll turn one shard into five. So really all you need is one. And then after that, you can just do a little bit of crafting and you can get as many as you want as long as you have your slates. Which, you know, they're used for a few things. Uh, one of the main things is empty sockets. Because like I said, the armor is really good. And that's the only way to get your empty sockets. But now that you've got your bound blade, uh, you can get your bloodstone, or blood brick. No, bloodstone brick, there we go. And, you know, you can go from there. Now, let's see, let's go up here, take a peek tier four right awesome now tier five this is the highest level most people will get to there's really not a whole lot well tier four is actually as far as you need to go with very basic things and you can make most of the sigils you can make yourself your bound armor um, you can completely fully automate the collection of LP with your uh, blood altar and let's see let's get rid of like this right and at that point, let's see, let's go up here, right? Let's see, let's grab, 
we'll grab that and this, right? So, mm -hmm. probably, uh, let's go 18,000, midnight, right? So, block of cursed earth. Actually, I want to just do it like here, right? Stuck on the glowstone. Okay. You don't really need, depending on how fast you want your LP to show up, you don't really need an oversized spawner here. A five by, why are you? Because of glowstone. The glowstone is making you catch fire. Okay. Uh, yeah, Cursed Earth is a bit of a bugger like that sometimes. Would you knock it off, please? Thank you. Now, what happens if I, say, start putting this stuff on top? All right. You know, there's some times where it's really annoying not knowing exact mechanics and or forgetting them i should say and one of them is that strong light sources will aha spontaneously combust cursed earth not just daylight i know the fire spreads across it i didn't think it would spontaneously combust and let's get me a wand right uh builder's wand super builder's wand all right And that's that. Yeah, that'll work, I guess. Let's see if I can protect the rest of my cursed earth. See, it's starting to spread again, so it's now dark enough in there that it shouldn't be a problem, right? Super dark in there. Let's get rid of you out of my hotbar anyway. And here we go. Got our mob farm. Let's go back normal mode mob spawn I mean right there and thanks to the magic of cursed earth they will spawn even if you're right here now usually what I do is I put a I uh let's see we'll do that I'll put like a half slab here mobs fall into that little hole you know for whatever mechanic I'm using to push them in and I just pick them off with a dagger sacrifice which LP goes into there however I think think if I do that and then grab a ritual diviner which is oh uh, let's see what's the recipe for this four different elemental inscription tools We've got fire air water earth four diamonds and an emerald right now say the fire inscription is a magma cream and a level three altar the air is a gas tier. The water is a block of lapis. And then the earth is a block of obsidian. All right, put those together. It's not shapeless. You have to get them in the, that exact order. And also they don't stack, so you can't any eye shift click them in. But this will net you the ritual diviner. Uh, current owner has, I forgot that I was the owner. Now you can go through and shift right click with it and you can see different rituals. Regeneration, Feathered Knife, er, Feathered Earth, Guy's Transformation, Reverence of the Condor, Heart of Falling Tower, Ballad of Alchemy, or of Expulsion. There's a lot of rituals by the way. Suppression, Zephyr, Harvest Moon, Cry of the Eternal Soul, Focus, Song of Evaporation, uh, I'm not even going to try to say that word, Requiem and Satiate the Stomach, Convocation of the Damned, and the one I want is called the, oh, come on, where are you? Well of Suffering, right? And actually, I'm going to build it over here first. So we're going to put you there. And you can see here, if you hold up your diviner, or hold your diviner and look at the Master Ritual Stone, which, by the way, is four obsidian, four ritual stones, and a property orb. The magician's works, right? So you can do this at level three. 
which is a good thing because you need rituals to uh, make your bound blade to get to tier four. And now all you do, as long as you have the right amount of ritual stones in your inventory, you can just uh, right click. And all right, what's in the way now? There's something. Wait a second. Do I have to maybe put this? Okay. Let's break that. Now I can break these. I think it needs to be one block higher. It's trying to place blocks underground, and there's stuff in the way. Right? Yes. Here we go. Oh no! You're still. You need one more. Okay. I thought it was only three high. Hmm, I was wrong. All right. Now we're, everybody's learning something today. I usually place this thing over the top of my blood altar, and it's actually the ritual is designed to fit around the blood altar. So. All right. Now what? Hmm. All right. Let's try it over here then. Five blocks, right? Suck it. I know it's not that tall. It can't be that tall, right? Oh, no, what it is. See the black ones there? This ritual diviner can't do that level of uh, uses. Here we go. We need to upgrade it to can place dusk ruins, right? Which require two demonic slates, which is the tier four slate. And two elemental inscription tool dusk, which is coal blocks. All right, that's that's an easy part, right? So let me get the right diviner. Forgot about that. So you do need a tier four to automate this thing. All right, and bunk, give me one of those. Delete that one and get these out of here too. Oh god, I gotta cycle through it all again, don't I? There is no way to cycle backwards as well, so do be careful. Otherwise, you have to go through all the way ever again. There we go. And you can now tune which way the uh, ritual faces. This one is in, it's an area of effect around here, right? So, actually, I need my ritual stone to be one block lower than it is. There's a blitz in there. So we'll take, replace that, Master Ritual Stone, and I'm inside a block. Thank you. Granted, this thing does, oh, what did I screw up here? Does make it a bit tougher to uh, use your altar. Actually, no, I placed everything one block off, didn't I? Yep. Hmm. All right, here we go. So, you want a two block air gap. I was trying to remember, it's been a while. You want two blocks, then your ritual stone, your master ritual stone, to place this, because that way these wonderful dust grooms here don't try to take place your glowstone. So, your best bet would be pretty much to add up your well of suffering first and build your mob farm around it, unless you don't mind fiddling with it. But you can see here, 7x7 seven seven in the middle, and it works pretty decent. And this thing does have a, a bit of a reach vertically, so let's go back into normal mode. Let's kill all the bats. And I got 20 spawnable spaces in here. And, oh god, things are spawning in. Here we go. Now, to get this thing to really work though, we need a weak activation crystal. Oop, one of these guys. Uh, let me get back to, there we go. No, not uses. Recipe. It is simply a lava crystal, which we've seen how to make, which is lava buckets, orb, obsidian, diamond. In the blood, tier three blood altar makes the activation crystal. This is how you turn on rituals. When rituals are running, they use LP. Oh, you feel a pull, but you're too weak to push any further. All right, well, 
I need more LP in my network. So, orb, the typo in here, orb. Um, let's just grab ourselves a transcendent. Transcendent. I don't even know what I tried saying there the first time, but bind it to us and just right click a bunch. I'm in creative mode, so this will not hurt. But uh, I would not recommend spam clicking like I just did. Now, right click here. Oh. Too weak to pull any further. This is a. Hmm. Certain we don't need the awakened, right? Okay. I think it's because I am in creative mode. It's not actually giving me LP in my uh, my network. Nope. Feel a pull, but you're too weak to push any further. That is weird. The creative this creative only activates any ritual, and it's like, nope, you can't do it. Hmm. Well, maybe I do need the insane one. I don't see why I would, though. Yeah. No, it's it's got to be I'm in creative mode. There is a creative blood orb, which should work fine for me, right? The orb of testing. And now I have an insane amount of LP. There we go. Rush of energy flows through the ritual. You can see here, A is loud. But it's doing damage to uh, all the mobs. Every time it does, it's adding LP to this altar. Or it should be. Give me that back. No, dang it, I... There it goes. It was filling up the internal tank. I broke and replaced my altar, right? But every time they take damage up there, and actually, it's killing the bats around the altar as well. So it has a, uh, it's pretty good range on the Y axis. Like I said, it's also loud. But you can put this thing above your altar, below your altar, and it will feed LP into it. Now, the better the mob farm, the more stuff you get, more LP you're gonna get. You can see the mobs are also dropping, you know, their regular drops. We have some Minisio in there, we have bones. Just watched him drop a gunpowder, I believe. So you're gonna need a way to get those out of there. That is, I did. I forgot these things were in here. I got a bat bag. <laughs> and there's a legendary bag over there. Cool. So, this thing is now fully automated. Now, if you want to put this LP into your personal network, just put your orb in the altar. It'll suck up LP from the altar and use it to fuel any rituals or anything else you have going on. However, for now, going back to peaceful because that's a little loud. Now, what's in the bat bag? Spawn bat egg. Cool. And now to automate this thing. Like say you had this going. Then what you can do is probably the easiest way to make sure that if you use like a hopper or like item ducks or anything else to push items into the altar, it'll put more than one in at a time if you're not careful. And it will try to convert the entire batch at once, which means it runs out of LP, the whole batch fizzles. Um, one of the easiest ways to do it is, uh, 
hyper rationing pipes from X Utilities actually. And X Utilities also has actually a really good, easy to use filter that you can change. Like say, okay, I don't want basic slates anymore. I want reinforced. In which case, you know, you'll be able to hold the slate in here until it becomes a reinforced slate and it can move on into your whatever storage you have set up. Uh, you can extract, insert and extract from any of the sides. And if you're in a mod pack with a creative tank, then let's see, let's go here. And is there how much LB in here? There's 3150 in there. Put a bucket in there. Wait a little bit, it'll fill up with a thousand millibuckets worth. Which I do believe is also a thousand LP, but no, it's more. Oh no, is it? Um, nope, it's exactly one thousand LP. Awesome, and we now have our bucket of life, which you know is a fluid, and we've got some creative mode. But slap it into creative tank, pump the creative tank into this thing, and you will have unlimited LP which most packs with Avarita have a way of making our creative tank. So once you do that, then Bob's your uncle. But any further questions, just leave them in the comments. I might do a sequel video to this. Hopefully I'll be a little better prepared for the different rituals and stuff. Like, yeah, that was slightly embarrassing. Can I finish this one now? Yep. Oh, I don't even know what ritual I was doing. Oh God, that's not the same one. week to push any further okay so it's got stuff in the way uh the rituals they have to have the right stones and only those stones to work and they have to be in the correct configuration that's why the diviner is so nice because otherwise oh god can you imagine trying to explain how to make this thing But I hope everybody enjoyed this video, and until next time, sign signing out, have fun.